Well, good evening. I'm pretty excited to be able to talk to you this evening about what has slowly become one of my favorite topics, chickens. So you'd never know it today because the sun is shining. It's absolutely glorious out here. I think it's about 23 degrees. Ben's pretty tired. Hey, it's a cooker today actually for, uh, what are we, this 8th of September, I think. So it's pretty warm. Uh, I think we're out, it's only going to last a couple days though. So we'll take advantage of it while we can. But the hot topic on everybody's mind today is how do I insulate or how do I heat my chicken coop? Come on chickens. So this is our farm. This is, this is Kirkfell farm. We overlook the lake here and we have two chicken houses. We have this one and this one. And we have around, what do we have? About 70, 75 birds right now. And really, that, we'll get to that part, but that's the answer is, is mo chickens. Um, but first we got to talk about insulation because more chickens doesn't work unless you got good insulation. So this is the inside of our main chicken house. This is a 12 by 16 reclaimed granary that we actually got for, oh, I think it was free actually this one. I think we just got it come and get this shed out of a guy's yard because had foxes living under it and uh it was pretty cool because you know you take a fox house and turn it into a hen house it's kind of it usually doesn't go that way anyway so yeah 12 by 16 granary it's got a nice high roof uh two by six walls so very very sturdy frame we've got it set up on uh actually old power poles so we can skid it around if we ever had to move it in the roof, we have sheep here as well. In the roof, we put uh, sheep's wool because the sheep wool wasn't really worth much. And there's no like, so how, what do I do with this stuff? So we thought it'd be really cool to insulate the roof and it worked fantastic for that. On the floor, we run deep bedding. So as I, you know, as I said, we're off, the, we're off the ground a ways with the power poles, uh, but the cold air can still get underneath there. I'll show you some stuff we did outside with landscaping to keep that warm in a bit. But yeah, we run a deep bedding system. So in the spring, we clean this out. We use it for mulch between our trees. And, and then for the rest of the summer, all into the fall, we just keep adding wood chips, wood shavings on top of the manure and just create a good carbon nitrogen balance. Reduces the odor in here. Uh, in the fall, when they come in with wet feet, that moisture goes into, the, into the, what is slowly composting and creating some, some, some heat and generating. Pretty low levels. Here in Northern Alberta, it gets pretty cold. We get minus 35, minus 40 degrees Celsius. So the moisture they do drag in, a lot of it doesn't really create a ton of heat with the compost. Some of it just freezes to the floor, but that's okay. Cause we do have a good heavy, thick insulating blanket on that floor. We have one heat lamp. That's it. Um, on this pedestal right here, that's where we run a heated water. So we got a three gallon water. We fill that up every day for 70 birds that they, they live in here. There's lots, as you can see, lots of places for them to roost. And as I mentioned, more chickens, that's, that's really the answer. Um, if you can get, you know, occupy as much space in your chicken coop as, as you know, as, as humanely as you can, that's really the answer. Chickens will huddle together and they'll keep each other warm. We've also got a couple of windows, uh, south facing windows, so they get a lot of sunlight during the day. That works, that works excellent. And then I'm just gonna run outside and show you what we did we outside. We did this this past weekend. Because we are up on the power poles, it creates a plenum space where a lot of air can blow through and keep things cold. So I just banked up some earth here and around the front. And then when the snow comes in, obviously it's gonna get banked a little bit higher. And it'll just stop that cold air from rushing in underneath there. And there'll be that, that voided off plenum space. Boy, this gray bird sure is talkative. Hey? So we generally don't run the heat lamp in here unless it does get down to that minus 35, minus 40 range. Uh, a lot of folks are concerned with the fire hazard with, well, heated pads, heat lamps, heated waters. Uh, anytime you're running all of that stuff, it takes a huge power demand as well. So it's gonna eat into your wallet as well as pose a fire risk for your chicken coop. Um, you can melt extension cords, overload breaker switches all that stuff. So the more you can do to insulate your coop and make it chicken friendly so they, you know, your chickens are nice and huddled up and, and, and toasty in there, the better. Ventilation wise, we also have the old grain chute. So we can just kick that open uh, or we can crack one of the windows. The windows on the south side here, 
our sliders so it works really good. The other thing you can do, depending on the type of coop and you know the insulation and the, and the climate where you're at, is try and get the appropriate type of birds. So we have a very well insulated coop. Uh, they're very toasty warm in there. So we can run a bird like a leghorn, it's a higher producer, but they're not as cold hardy. Now uh, you see that big hefty Orpington in the back there? She's a dual purpose bird, very well suited for cold weather. Short combs, lots of feathers, uh, lots of meat, you know, to her. Very well suited for that. Uh, Plymouth Bard Rock, they're also really good. They also, the, for the first chickens we got on this farm were actually uh, partridge chanticleers, and they were like amazingly winter hardy. Like the, the folks we got them from, like the toes had frozen off of them, and the combs were frostbitten. And those birds just kept on trucking, but they were well, well into their years. Uh, so they, they weren't laying much eggs and we thought, well, geez, they're, they're great big birds. We'll, when we butcher them, we thought, okay, we'll, we'll see if there's any meat left on them. They were all feathers. Let me tell you, they're just like, they're just like that great Pyrenees, right? Like it's all hair, but if you ever shaved it, there'd be like a chihuahua underneath that thing. This is our second coop. This was actually our first coop. A couple chickens just hanging out in here. We actually use this for a brooder in the spring uh, when we bring extra chicks in and once they're all grown up and free we just you know kick the door open everybody can party and get along and not have to struggle about space we'll close this up again once the snow flies so that everybody uses the main coop so you can see in here because we do use this as a brooder we've got a couple of a couple of heat lamps and we can drop these down so that we can keep this at a you know an optimum temperature for the chicks other than that these things never run uh, we've got a sliding window again. This one actually faces west, but that's that's fine. We do get quite a quite a bit of sunlight, you know, still from the west. And then we've got a roof vent up here, which I can just undo these screws and pop that down, uh, depending on depending on the ambient temperature. Our wintertime temperatures are very inconsistent, right? Like, so we get, you know, it could be minus five one day and then minus twenty five the next. And so you kind of got to stay on top of weather patterns, the weather forecast and just, you know, be ahead of the game. And that's kind of why we're having this conversation today because it is 23 degrees, right? We've got the garden hoses strung out, everything's fine. And then two weeks from now, we were just like, oh, it was so nice, but now there's snow on the ground and there's ice everywhere and all our hoses are froze up and our eggs are freezing in the nesting boxes. So that's actually why we do have that heat lamp in this chicken house is because of the nesting box is right there. And so when it gets to that minus 35, minus 40 range, we, we can't keep that chicken coop above above freezing. So we just keep a heat lamp there. In the daytime, you can turn it on. They can go to lay their eggs. And in the evening, when you come and you make sure everybody's doing good and give them a little bit of snack, you can turn that light off again. So now say you've only got five or six chickens and you just, you're not set up to fill a large chicken house like this, or you have a smaller chicken house and it's not insulated very well, and you're really not sure how to keep them warm. And you're maybe leaning towards something like this. There are other options than just a heat lamp. You can get a ceramic bulb, so it emits no light, but it does emit heat. That's not a bad idea. Um, last year, I kind of experimented with this a little bit to see how extending the light cycle would affect the chicken's uh, laying capability. What I found is that, well, red light, the uh, the infrared lights, they, they were I guess the lesser of the two evils, we'll say that, the lesser of the two evils. Um, whereas the white light definitely imposed stress upon the birds uh, and they did not like to lay in that. I also found out that light that was earlier in the morning, so say about five o'clock in the morning, if you could get your lights to come on, or you know, a couple hours earlier in the day basically, and then, and then just shut them off when you come out and you do chores in the morning that works better than allowing your light to go extended into the night because when the chickens come in, in the nighttime they expect to you know it's gradually gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and the chickens get tired and then they roost uh, but if if it's broad daylight in here and they're in here just like yeah chicken party and all of a sudden the lights go out they get lost they get disoriented they get stressed and they can also be an easy picking for a predator so I guess in summary, really recommend, you know, big coop, lots of chickens, well insulated. If that's not for you and you're looking at an electrical option, try and use a heated water, 
uh, and then and just let your birds do the best they can. If, if that still doesn't work for you and you're looking at, at lighting, use a ceramic bulb. If that's too expensive, use a red, a red UV bulb. Uh, if you're gonna use the white ones, again, just try and use it during daylight hours and on your nesting boxes alone. But keep a good close eye on the weather forecast. When it hits that minus 35, minus 40, you wanna make sure your girls are well taken care of. So as soon as I'm done this video, I'm heading out to Rio Grande to go uh, work with my in-laws on insulating their chicken coop. They have a, an older building that was previously used as a chicken coop, but it was insulated with sawdust. And so that's all been torn out now because there's just like mice everywhere. So we're gonna put fiberglass in there followed by a good vapor barrier and then some tin sheeting so that it's easily washed. You know, you can clean it and, and whatnot. And, uh, and then they'll be ready for winter. So I hope you have a fantastic evening. If you've got any questions, shoot them down in the comment section below. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please go down below, hit that subscribe button. That's gonna do wondrous things for you. You'll get updates on all of our videos, whether it's chickens or, I mean, we've got sheep back here, we got pigs over there, there's cows, there's horses, there's donkeys, you name it, we've got it. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. As I said, I hope you have a fantastic evening. We'll see you tomorrow.